Morning guys, welcome back to Toon and Lee's farm and today is putting your feet up day not not really you know that hardly ever happens we had um, an hour or two off yesterday but uh, no, we're back on it again today currently Toon's at the local temple big Buddha day today so I just dropped her off there with her bits and bobs met her mum there I've come back just had a bite to eat and thought I'd do a little bit of a video before I start some graft. So all the animals have been fed. I've got to go and get the duck eggs in a minute. So I'll just keep on doing little snippets as I'm going round. Um, cut down on the, uh, the phone camera shaking. So today what we're going to talk about is poor pang farming and what the heck is it? Some of you might already know because you, you, you may have... Um, heard me pointing out to a few people in the comments section that um, the About Us page on our YouTube channel detail it gives you about 500 words to detail what your channel's about. So we've touched upon the concept of poor pang farming. There, gang, gang, get out! I haven't quite finished my anti-dog fenced area. And I've started putting some more plants down here. Get out! That's why no one likes you. Um, so the late king bumby pole from uh, uh, Rama number nine, he's the one that really sort of like taught and emphasised the, uh, the importance of a poor pang existence. And what it basically means is being self-sufficient and sustainable which is nothing new, people have been doing that for years but it actually gave you ideas on how to achieve that and the main reason being is as food prices increase and fuel increases and all that sort of thing uh, and the climate changes if you rely on just one crop, if you're a farmer and you rely on one cash crop and for some reason the, you have heavy rains for that year like your rouse or your rice drowns, or you have exceptionally dry conditions for a year, and your, your cassava fails, um, then you haven't got all your eggs in one basket. So the basics of poor pang farming can be done on just three or four or five rye. Some people do it even less. It depends on obviously how many mouths you got to feed. So we got 50 rye. We're not doing a whole lot poor pang farming on 50 rye we do have some cash crops the main two being about five or six rye which will be increased soon of the giant taiwan bamboo and 4,000 eucalyptus trees which we've just about finished putting in we've got some, we've got about five or six hundred left to go somewhere else on the farm um, the bamboo can start being cut next year and the eucalyptus we're looking at about a year and a half to two years before we start to cut that. So there are two main cash crops. We've also got the starting of a huge fishing lake, which is obviously nothing to do with poor pang farming. So we have diversified even more. Um, you know, we are following poor pang, but we are we are going even outside the realms of that as well. So if, if nothing happens with the fishing lake, we've still, we'll still have huge and masses amounts of fish to sell, so that's not a problem. Um, the eucalyptus, if it grows slower than expected, that's not a problem, and likewise with the bamboo. However, they both sell very, very well out here. Um, demand outstrips supply, so that's why we chose those two. We also love bamboo. Um, uh, we don't just eat it fresh, we also um, make sour bamboo as well. As far as the eucalyptus goes, yes, a lot of it will be sold, but a lot of it will be used for building materials because you get through a lot of timber doing this sort of lifestyle, mainly shelters and fencing and that sort of thing. Yes, you could use concrete posts which last forever almost, um, but they're more expensive. You can say, well, you only do it once. Well, we've almost got free, free timber with bamboo and 
with the eucalyptus, so we'll carry on doing that. If it only lasts six months or so, so be it. But um, it's lasting longer than that so far, mainly because we've treated everything with um, termite killer. So the animal houses, what we've got planned for that, well, you can see over there it looks like a gypsy site. It's like something out of the Snatch movie. Um, what we've been doing is just keeping a surplus of, of building materials there. Because um, we've, we've got some young, young chicks in there. This eventually will be a guy ban house, the Thai chickens. So when the chicks are out, all this will come out. And then down that pond, far end, not the far end, but the fence pond with the geese, we'll be doing a large duck house. Because that noise you can hear, we've still got a hundred Campbell's, Campbell ducks in there. So the ducks will be around the pond. Uh, the duck and the geese poo feed the pond, well, makes its way into the pond and feed the fish in there. No one, please, 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 please remember this because I'm getting pissed off with people saying, your fish are going to taste like poo. No one will be eating those fish. They are for the fishing lake. The four ponds that we've got just at the back of the house, they're for eating and for selling. There's no poo in those, okay? So poo fish for fishing, no poo fish for eating. Now for people that are still struggling to grasp the concept, no poo, no poo, no poo, no poo. Clean water, they're not muddy pits, they do not taste of mud, they're for eating and selling. Simple as peas. See everywhere starting to green up now. Okay, so the chicken poo and the duck poo. The chicken poo in the fence pond, like I said, will make its way into the water. So even when they poo on the sides, when you get heavy rains, it washes it in there. The chicken poo is put on all the plants. So if you look at the banana trees there, and we'll go a little bit closer and then you'll get more of an idea of the scale. These are five months old, I believe. So once we have these ponds dug about a month after that, so it might not even be five months. Uh, this is Klopp's security office. He loves this, I tell you. If not, made his moody hole here. He's there night time. Not really to take care of these ponds because the dogs at the house are not far away. They would bark. It's to take care of that pond there and if anyone comes around there. But at the moment we've only put about 500 baby tilapia in there. So here we go, five month old banana tree. Someone was asking me quite a bit of info about banana trees on our uh, Facebook page. Um, we don't know a lot about bananas, but I think we're doing all right. Look at that bad boy. And they are looking healthy. So, my main concern when we had the ponds dug was this lovely tilled earth, perfect for growing stuff, not. Um, so everything that we've grown, we've dug out a bucket size hole and filled it up with chicken poo, quail poo, and then put fertiliser, uh, blood and bone. I know previously I've been calling it vitamin seed, I've just picked that up from two and it's not vitamin, it's, it's blood and bone. Um, gave them water for a few weeks and now they're just left to their own devices every now and again if we get surplus chicken poo we pop it on there and they seem to love it so there are the banana trees this is the car of Galangal it's going well now so this was a wild well not wild Toon's dad started to grow that over 10 years ago we've split up the split it up from the base of that tree there and we'll put another line in because it's all grown back near that pond what else have we got planned with the chicken poo well i've been researching yes i know it's hard to believe i normally don't that's why we make a lot of mistakes researching um vermiculture or farming worms which sounds oh my godly what are you doing mate just making hard work for yourself they're not hard work once you've got your tank in position and put a tap on it, um, your produce, your kitchen waste, um, chicken waste, 
as it as in the, the muck or the quail muck can go in there your worms break it down you get worm pee come out in the bottom which can be used as a liquid fertilizer if you I believe it's 10 to 1 or 1 to 10 I can't remember which way around it is but um, so you dilute it and then you can give it as a liquid feed to most most plants uh, and then the worm castings can be put on plants as well there's also a bit of a market out there for selling the worm castings and, and the, the worm pea but we'll probably use it all ourselves and of course fishing bait for the fishing lake so when the chickens are done and dusted obviously with a previous video I think it's wasted we eat those um, bits and bobs that are left over that we don't eat the dogs get chickens that pass and we don't know why or ducks pass and we don't know why or they're too small they go in the catfish pond which we've shown you before uh, and then of course the eggs we eat a lot of eggs probably too many but my cholesterol, my cholesterol levels are all right um, it's good for your strength there's a lot of physical work on the farm so you've got to keep your protein levels up um, Toon does salt egg, so she does salt quail egg, um, duck egg, and then she does horse pea egg as well. At present, we can't fulfil the demand for eggs. We're getting loads of people come. Well, I say loads, that's over-exaggerating, but most days we get at least one or two people come, and quite often we're turning them away saying they're already gone. So that's why we've got another 100 Campbell ducks just about to start laying. Um, the other bonus is clearing the land you can see that we've only had 28 ducks and three geese in here for a couple of weeks not full time I'm just about to let the little nutters out now um, so they stay in the fence pond overnight the ducks go in the house in the morning you go and feed that we feed the ducks in the house leave them in the house for another hour because sometimes you get the late eggs normally these Campbell's Campbell's lay the regs um, very early morning while it's still dark but we've got a couple of late girls so if you let them out too early the eggs will either drop into the pond or you might find an egg or two in here you might not find any because the crows get them which I can hear now so we're still undecided what we're going to do here but it's free food for the ducks so we'll let them carry on uh, this is where we got the snake head fingerlings from um, and someone did ask me on the previous video or two ago how they're getting on dead dead um, when we're doing the eucalyptus um, we forgot to change the water we were doing two or three water changes a day with rainwater I thought Tuna had done it Tuna thought I'd done it and then they died in eggy water but there was a few left so we've, we've popped them into the Bichon pond here so we'll we'll go again it's unfortunate it was our mistake it was another cock up but you know these things happen I suppose so what else are poor pang farming um, eggplants they were growing wild up near the bamboo so we cleaned round them and left the the best big ones there that was already started to fruit and these smaller ones We've just moved them to here. It was a bit of a gamble with these, but we thought, well, let's put them where we'd like them. If they if they grow, great. Uh, if they don't, we've still got the other plants where they like to be, and it, 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 it's worked. You have to be careful with these, though. It's um, Eggplants can cross-pollinate with other types of eggplants, and then you see bright yellow eggplants which are bitter and hard some people like them they're quite good in the somtan but they're nowhere near as good as as how they should be so that's another thing anything growing wild take advantage of it and if you can improve it and so be it I was out with the strimmer yesterday we're really really trying hard not to use any chemicals obviously with the fish ponds here you don't want chemicals right near it anyway um, It's, it's good, it's a mulch, it's another vitamin, it will rot down and improve the soil quality over time. Yeah, it'll take a while, but we'll get there. And also, you can see with the moon rock here, it helps bind everything together, all this root system. 
and you can see the morning glory it is working what we've been trying to do getting it to grow all the way around the ponds so once this goes over this side then we'll start stripping it out the middle wherever you walk you want to try and keep it fairly clear there's a lot of snakes around the tab tim are growing well in there so these are the bright orange tilapia going well can't keep up can't pick enough fresh weeds for them it's almost a full-time job now of course me and Toon it's been well uh, documented in our previous videos over the last oh when was it last April we started we do eat a lot of fish we catch a lot of fish not as many as we used to but, but uh, we got a big eel this morning and we still get the odd mud fish when time allows wild caught uh, so we eat a lot of our fish that we grow we have just started selling some and nothing's wasted again fish that pass and it's not very many probably less than about 10 and that included when we relocated them from the other house uh, go in the catfish pond and when we have fish for food for ourselves all the waste goes in the catfish pond and the heads and the scales uh, the dogs get so it's a nice little treat for them here we go I don't know why but I seem to have an affinity with with ducks and geese well, I used to live in Wisbeach and the standing joke there is everyone's related to everyone and got webbed feet so that's probably why Come on, out you come. Geese eggs, very few and far between. We've got a few when they first came here. Uh, the crows had them. Look at that duck. As if it hasn't had enough food already. There you go. Uh, but the geese really, the they're guard geese. Anyone that comes down this road here, then uh, Vince and the girls let us know. And then the dogs all start, so it's quite good. Uh, for some reason, the night time, no. When people go past, the geese aren't very, aren't very noisy. They, they tend to just sit in the middle of the pond here. So if they do make a nest, um, the geese then we'll let them sit on them and we'll hatch them we, we, we won't eat the goose eggs we've tried a few but to me they're I don't know almost oily I'm not a fan so they're very very good at eating the long grass weeds very good still getting some ripe mangoes falling on the floor we're not picking them quick enough have a quick look round there. I'll probably get bitten by ants again. I won't be picking any today. No, not on the floor this time. So what? Oh yeah, so, so the mangoes we eat quite a lot fresh for sure. Um, you can pickle them, which are very good as well. Um, and the fish, of course, eat the overly ripe ones. When we uh, lived at the other house, there was a wild mango tree growing next door to us. And uh, the chickens love fresh ripe mango. So, uh, again, poor Pang farming. Try not to waste everything. You want it sort of like a... Everything feeds everything. So our biggest outlay is the, is the animal feed. So you've got to try and recoup or get, the, get, the, get your animal feed to go as far as possible. So... Up to about three or four months ago, this other side of this fence was full of old banana trees that had been here for since the start of time, really. Hardly ever fruit. So after the first fruiting, you're supposed to chop them down, but they hadn't been. So we chopped them all down. We're doing one a day. We started it when my mum was here. So uh, so even even visitors have to we have to get the most out of them as well. So she would chop up the banana tree into small pieces 
and then it would supplement the diet from these. But although we've got a lot of banana trees growing now, there's not enough and it is time consuming and quite tiring chopping up banana trees. So I'd like some sort of shredder for it. But until then, the other way that we've come up with it of um, keeping the cost down a little bit is by starting to give all the birds um, rice, whole seed rice, so that it's still got the sheath on it. So currently we're paying 430 baht for a 30 kg bag of chicken pellet and duck pellet for the same 30 size kg bag of the rice excuse me we pay 300 baht so it is quite a bit of a saving when you think how many animals we've got but is there a way that you could improve it even more or oh, just heard a mud fish in this rice farm this is the sort of area that we put the the standing hooks with the frogs their rice is going well and so is ours so the other way we've got of reducing feed costs is actually to grow the rice ourselves now it has been a hot topic of debate why are you growing rice it's hard work you're not going to make any money we're not making money with with the idea is to save money and it hasn't cost as much so far the main expense is buying your rice seed so with 75 kg of rice seed thrown into here so we have to claw that back then we have to keep 75 kg back to grow again and then the rest of it will be for the birds now you feed them sort of twice you get two two whammies with it really you give them the rice seed but after you uh, crop it all right gang where you been girl then you let the birds in here I just see a cormorant, cheeky fucker. So the good thing is it's free fertiliser for your, your rice farm area. They eat a lot of the snails, so it's free food. A lot of the bugs, yeah they do eat a lot of the baby fish as well. And a lot of the weeds as well. Look at the size of that velociraptor. Uh, oh no, velociraptors couldn't fly, could they? Pterodactyl, that's the one. So the rice is looking good. Um, as far as chemicals go, uh, there was a hormone. It's been sprayed with hormone once. Toon did that. Um, we've spoken to quite a few people. There's just no way around it. If you want good rice, you've got to give it the hormone. And then uh, another week or so, then there'll be some vitamin that's thrown in there. The idea is over time, with the ducks being allowed in here at the end of each cycle, so it should be three to four cycles per year, a lot of the duck poo will replace the need for that, hopefully, or we can reduce it down. Now, it is looking a little bit patchy in places. That's quite normal. It's where your, your water sits a little bit deeper. So what Toon and the mum have started doing is stripping out these heavily planted areas and then transplanting them to there. After she's finished at the temple and a friend are coming back and then hopefully they'll finish that today. So there's another cost. So it's 300 baht to pay for someone to come and help you on the land, which doesn't sound a lot, but they so say when we did the eucalyptus, 4,000 plants, okay, we've put in about 3,500. The first three days, that was just uh, two and yours truly. And although it was fun, and a great sense of achievement it just breaks you it just physically breaks you and we were very very slow we were doing about about 300 plants a day so we just wouldn't get it done by the time the rain season finishes so same friend that's coming today and her husband came for two days all teamed up bang done um so 300 baht a day times 4. 28, isn't it? <laughs> no. Um, again, doesn't sound a lot, but you've got to claw that back, haven't you? Um, and that's the way we look at things now. Although it sounds like we're being a bit cheap, Charlie. We have spent a lot of, lot of money 
on the land a lot more than anticipated and we thought we could do everything ourselves we could do but it would be the death of us I think so we thought right where it's a big job we'll get some help in we've been lucky that Toon's nephew has been around for quite a while so he's been helping us with the heavy stuff driving the e tock 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 tack 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 uh, he's been doing a good job but he's currently injured now with a swollen hand and foot so I might have to kick start the iron buffalo and have a go at it myself um, poor Pang what else well we all know the kitchen waste goes to chickens and ducks and some of it goes to the dogs um, the banana tree leaves just get hacked and laid down onto the gravel, uh, the the, uh, the topsoil areas. There are things that we're not going to be able to generate for ourselves. We have we are going to be growing some palms for for palm nuts to create the oil, but we won't be making that ourselves. We've currently got one that's been here from year dot. Um, the guy at the local orange farm. He's got six for us, so we'll pop them in. They're just for selling. You can start cropping after two years. Um, doesn't sound a lot, three baht per kg, but when you sell, when they're ready for cutting, uh, you just cut them all year round. So every few weeks, um, the actual company comes round and then just cuts your trees for you. So six or seven trees doesn't sound a lot. They wouldn't come just for that, but we're only about one click away from uh, the orange farm when they come to him several times a week so that's good as far as selling the bamboo goes we've already made contact with some people that want it um, some will even pay you and provide the bits and bobs for you to create sour bamboo they'll give you 12 baht a kg now it doesn't sound a lot but you think giant taiwan bamboo which grows incredibly fast one head at the moment our record is just touching over three kg and when that starts coming up to get to that sort of size it takes about five or six days so what's that 12 kg no sorry three kgs 12 24 36 36 baht for one head if we sold it in the market jesus well there's a bloke selling it local to us here and he's selling fresh bamboo for 25 baht a kg so that would have been 75 baht for one bamboo head so it's not as bad as people were thinking is it or is it but of course it's all right saying oh it's worth this much that much until it actually happens it's all pie in the sky whereas these instant gratification you pop them in this is chat on and then you just pick the tops. Toon has these raw or boiled, you can fry them. I like them fried with um, like a scrambled egg and make it into like a patty. Very, very good. And then you just dip it in a sweet chilli shrimp paste. Very, very good charm. So we're going to grow more of that. Poor Pang. Having enough. Being frugal, but not going without. Just your little vegetable patch. Just look at this, the size of this small vegetable patch here. Okay, so right down here is the seed bed. So currently we've got canar, which is like a spring green. We've got papaya seedlings coming up. We've got coriander. Garlic, which is doing terribly. That one there is one of those plants that we were telling you about when we were trying to find mushrooms that day that um, you can smoke that and it alleviates the symptoms of hay fever. Homdang, which is the Thai shallot, incredibly expensive now around here. Uh, Toon calls that lovely basil. Just started picking that today. Look at the size of it. When it's that fresh, you can eat all of it. Down here, we were given these... All these little coconut, these are the ones that people eat the meat and drink the, the juice. They don't make the milk from these. 
when they get like that, if they've still got water in, then you can grow them. So all you do is you sit them on wet soil. This is right underneath our roof. We haven't got gutter this size, so it's this side. And hopefully they will start sprouting and then when they're about a foot high, we'll move them. Behind that, we've got a long line of lemongrass and it goes round the other, the other side as well. Uh, that's not lemongrass for eating. We've got that round the pond, that stuff. This is the anti-mosquito lemongrass. I know it won't cure the mosquitoes, but any little helps. Under the soil, which has not made an appearance yet along here, I've put some ginger in. It was just starting to sprout or shoot as I put it in, so hopes are high for that. And then this, and there's a few others starting to come up along there is kachai which look like little fingers you'll see them in tom yam soup and that sort of thing again these are all quite expensive commodities to purchase at the markets now food is becoming expensive there's no two ways about it Tim picked up a pomelo yesterday at the market 20 baht which is say ooh, what's that, 50p well there are, I think they're a quid in the UK so 20 baht doesn't sound a lot. Um, I'm trying to get out of the habit of converting everything. I know my maths is terrible, but that's not the main reason. Um, you know, you're here. You're buying things with baht. You're selling things for baht. shouldn't really try to to keep converting things. You've got to think baht, baht, baht all the time, I think. Um... So what else have we got? I've put some chilli plants. So just a very, very small area. And I've only just really started doing this the last month. We're going to do a lot, lot more of this. Um, so I've already extended. You've got to love your path, haven't you? Look at that. Very sure underfooting, that is. So again, these are all basil along here. Um, I don't know, the, they seem to like the quail poo more than the chicken poo, but they're just very, very good. What else are we going to grow? Just about everything that we can lay our hands on. But the homdang is a very, very good one. There's also something, Tune calls it wild garlic. It's just, it's more like an onion, although it tastes like garlic. And that is it, that is the number one expensive bulb vegetable a lot of people use it for medicine I can't remember the price per kg but it's horrific so I'm going to get my hands on some of that and uh, give that a go as far as covering your costs go I've already said it's, it's cost a lot of money animals aren't cheap an egg laying chicken that's just about to start is 200 baht that's a prop one through the proper channels that's been vaccinated and been health checked, these farms. Um, so that's through the, the local sort of like council office, you go and get the contact through there. Your ducks are 150 bar each. I know we've got a few Muscovies, we got them from someone in town, uh, the, the local village. They're 100 bar per kg. Then you've got the shelters, the, the accommodation for them, the fencing as well as the food so they are expensive to keep um, the guy bans the the Thai chickens we, we were given 12 of those by the guy who normally comes and looks after our place when we're not here for a day or so uh, he didn't want any money for them but we gave him a few quid for it uh, they'll just be used for meat but they take quite a long time to grow uh, turkeys no use whatsoever but we saw them and I've always liked turkeys, so we've got Turkey Boy and his missus. Silkies, we won't eat those. Um, we won't eat their eggs either. We're going to let them have baby silkies. Um, so yeah, I, can we cover our costs? Of course we can. Uh, but it just takes a while. One of the important aspects of keeping poultry in porpang farming is bug control and weed control. I very, very rarely have to strim this area now. The, du the ducks over here have just about cleaned that area. When it's totally clean, we're just going to leave a handful of ducks there. 
the, Muscovy, the four Muscovies will stay there and there'll be one Campbell boy, lucky Campbell boy, with about five or six girls. You can have up to about ten. Um, if you can keep them into small families, then they will actually sit on their eggs. That's what one of the Campbell duck farmers was telling us. So the idea being that uh, we won't have to incubate those. We're only going to be incubating quail eggs because they won't sit on their own. And they should be able to keep on top of the weeds that side. But if we put just those few numbers in now, that there's no way they would get it all clear. So it's about two thirds clear now. Once it's clear, then we'll strip them out and put most of them down the fence pond. We've got a few ducks in here, which wasn't the plan, um, but they're boy ducks, or mostly boy ducks and quite young. We've still got a few ducklings in with the frogs there. Again, there's some boys there, so they're just helping clear this area. As the chicken numbers increase, then we can move those ducks on. Uh, it normally doesn't end well for boy ducks, though. It's, it's either um, they get everything or nothing. It's either they get all the girls or they end up in the pot. Um, ducks eat a hell of a lot. They're good to watch in the evening as well, late, late afternoon, early evening, because they are brilliant hunters. I'd read about it, but I'd never seen it before. They all chase the ginly along here, which is the small grasshopper. Very, very good. So it keeps the bugs down for the trees, which is good. Um, and also fertilizes them and keeps the weeds down. But chickens aren't as good as I thought. We'll probably need more chickens to get this area clearer. But we don't want too many, otherwise it's just going to smell of chicken poo when you're going to be having your dinner. So that's it really, just a little bit of a insight onto how we're trying to um, apply the concept of poor pang farming. We're not in it to make loads of money. Um, long term, once the big projects are just about finished, which they almost are, I reckon another couple of months, is to actually go into applying our time into maintaining and improving things rather than making things from new. We're almost there for the new stuff and then it'll just be tweaking the stuff that we've done and of course doing my worm farm. This style of existence it sort of encourages people in a close-knit community to I wouldn't say pull together but it does bring you yeah I would say it does it does pull people together a little bit closer. You know, now when people come to buy a tray of eggs, they'll bring the kids and the kids will have a look round and have a look at the quail or the turkeys that they haven't seen before. So it's nice that way. Or it could just be that Uncle Lee has a bag of sweets here and it's well known throughout the village. It could be that. There you go. All right then. Thanks again as always for watching. No tatars for now, even though Toon isn't here. Thank you.